like the banking industry is about to collapse. So you're clearly an entrepreneur. I mean, your story is just yeah. like something out of the Zuckerberg yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. When's the movie coming out? Be in the business of your passion. Oh, I deserve $100,000. No, you don't deserve anything. Failure makes you perfect. But why haven't the banks implemented these solutions that these fintechs are doing? Is it because they just keep milking the system? People are cost conscious. If you tell them how to save money, they'll go for it. What would you say was your biggest obstacle in growing any of your businesses? I'm not sure if you heard about this company called Well Simple, Acorn, Robinhood. Uh... How do you know what idea you should go and invest your time and resources in? Yeah. So you're the CEO. Yes. I want my dream job and I'll make a lot of money. The name of my business is Thoughtbox. My dad was a school principal. My oh, mother wow. was a school teacher. Oh my goodness, that is a bad combination for I an know. entrepreneur. I know. So when I finished my MBA, I also had a painting degree, which was contradictory to each other. Yeah, let's say you're late 30 or early 30. I'm a billionaire. Yeah, you, no, you're, <laughs> then you're in a different club. <laughs> then you're wealth complex club. Yeah, yeah. Not, then when I was in the hospital bed, I realized like, you know, I could be dead. And, no, you're referring to uh, Ritz, RSPs. Yes. That's how traditional people Yes, think. but how do you know which one is best for you, right? Well, I'm not really an Uber driver. I'm just an undercover Uber Better driver. Better than serial killer, right? Whoa! Probably robot police will replace police. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Today's episode is brought to you by Refuel by DigiPower. Action-packed, rechargeable batteries for your GoPro devices. Gearbest.com! Gearbest.com! Mr. Arun. Uber, yeah, come yeah. in. Can I sit here? Yeah, yes, you can. How are you? Good, how are you? Marcy. Arun, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. It's crazy traffic here always, yeah. right? Uh, you know. So, uh, what's the uh, address that we're going to again? Oh, uh, you can drop me at the intersection of Queen, is it a king and uh, Simple. Okay. So we're on something called the Uber Experiment. It's like a TV show. Uh, what we're doing is we're filming Torontonians around the city, and we're talking about business ideas and passion. So uh, we could drive, keep driving, and I could take you to your destination, or we can engage in a conversation, and then you can tell me what you do. What sure. do you? Okay. You look like you're, you're a business person, right? So tell me what you do. I'm basically a serial entrepreneur. Oh, that's what I tell people I am. <laughs> I'm not really an Uber driver. I'm just an undercover Uber Better driver. Better than serial killer, right? Whoa, serial killer. That's, that's, that's the PG-13 show here. Yeah, I do consulting for banks. Oh, I see. Yeah, so CIBC, Scotia, RBC and stuff. So today I was doing consulting for CIBC. Our audience is composed of anybody, say, from who's in high school right. to entrepreneurs who are running their own business and startups. So would you mind just Absolutely. telling people what your definition of a consultant is? Sure. There are different kinds of consulting involved. The banking industry is going through a very interesting time. All these big banks are being threatened by the startups. There's a term fintech. called fintech. It's called okay. financial technology firms. Okay. So for example, um, I'm not sure if you heard about this company called Wellsimple. No. Uh, what they do is basically they profile the customers based on what their investment goal is. For example, like you're like, a, let's say you're late 30 or I'm early 30. I'm a billionaire. Yeah, no, you're, <laughs> then you're in a different club. <laughs> then you're wealth complex club, there not a wealth simple oh, club. Wealth complex. <laughs> So yes. let's say like average Canadians or Americans. Um, what is the average income in Canada and US uh, these days? Nowadays, I'll say about 55K. Wow, that's it? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. minus taxes. Yeah, minus taxes and other things. <laughs> yeah. Let's say you are starting your life. You, you just got married. You are planning to have kids in the next couple of years. And then uh, you're moving up to the professional ladder. So now is the time for you to start thinking about investing and thinking about your kids. And, no, you're referring to uh, Ritz, RSPs, yes. that's how traditional people Yes, think. but how do you know which one is best for you? Your bank tells you. No, they don't tell you. And I'll that, tell you what ex exactly happens when you walk into a bank. Banks will try to sell you mutual fund. They're not going to tell you anything else. They'll probably talk about it, but the, at the end, you'll walk out probably with a mutual fund investment. I did. Because that's how they get paid. Okay. So, and then people started realizing that. And every time I go to a branch or bank I, or call somebody at a bank, I, I walk out with a mutual fund, what's going on? Like, is there anything else available in the market? 
So that's why these guys came up and they're selling information? Yes. What they're doing is basically they're trying to profile you and there is a term called robo-advisors. So basically what the, how it works is basically it works like an algorithm. Is this no? Is this Wells Simple? Is this your company? No, there oh, okay. are so many other companies oh, I like see. Acorn, Robinhood. Uh, Please sponsor uh, us, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the banks are trying to improve their customer experience by moving away from the traditional banking practice. Potentially, this fintechs will probably take over. They'll basically steal the customer. Yeah, steal the customer. For only, but for the mutual And form. exactly, it will happen like Uber did to the taxi. Oh. So Uber. basic. Oh, that's and you know it's needed. Yeah. They should also replace the police. I think. Yeah, something Still like that. Somebody. So probably yeah. robo police will replace police. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Drop the gun. You are under arrest. Airbnb is replacing all these big, big uh, hotel hotels. chains. Yeah. Uber is replacing taxis and stuff. Fintech is gonna replace banks. So. But they wouldn't replace the traditional savings and checking account, would they? Probably they will. That's why um, there are different kinds of fintechs uh, coming up. For example, you probably heard about this company called Tangerine. Of course. People are fed up with banking fees, right? Yes. So that's why companies like Tangerine is coming up. All the big banks are eyeing them. So too bad Tangerine was taken over by Scotia, but there will be 10 different Tangerines around. Right. So how many you can take over? Uh, Canadians are very conservative when it comes to putting their information on the internet. Aren't they going to be afraid that it's going to go under and fold? First of all, these tech companies are not like overseas companies. They're Canadian companies sitting on Canadian soil, regulated by Canadian government and all these financial regulatory bodies. And second thing about Canadians is not only Canadian, this is true for pretty much everyone, is people are cost conscious. If you tell them how to save money, they'll go for it. Yes. So, and nowadays everything is pretty secure, regulated. So what's make the difference is the cost. Why haven't the banks, and I think I know the answer to this, but why haven't the banks implemented these solutions that these fintechs are doing? Is it because they just keep milking the system? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, banks are big. They have this legacy system which is built over probably hundreds of years, right? So it's very difficult to tear them apart. Plus, people are not ready to make a switch all of a sudden. So people are switching, but it's happening at slower pace than non-financial industry. However, as these fintech companies are growing bigger and bigger, they're gonna have more money to invest, to drop more customers. So there'll be a point of acceleration, which will be happening soon. Well, what like with Uber? Yes, exactly. So it's just a matter of time. All these big banks are having office in startup, uh, startup, like acceleration centers like Mars. Right. If you go to Mars, so that's an incubator in downtown yes, Toronto. Yeah, exactly. This is the biggest probably in Canada. Um, you'll see, like you know, CIBC is having big office, RBC is having big office. Why? Because what? they're looking for yeah. fintech companies to potentially acquire. Yeah. Or probably, they're probably trying to hire these people who have the startup mentality and start a fintech company. So let, let me tell you what happened about two years ago. You heard about this bank called Capital One? Two years ago, they did a very, very interesting move. They had acquired user experience agency called Adaptive Bank. I uh -huh. heard of them. Yes, Adaptive Path was basically the specialized user experience agency for customer experience improvement and customer research. Why did they do that? The reason for them doing that is because they realized that you know unless they move uh, their customer experience up to a couple of notches or maybe uh, operate in a different mood, uh, they're gonna be wiped off soon. It may not happen two years down the line, but at least a decade down the line, which is not far, right? Mm -hmm. So that actually created a lot of inquisitiveness uh, in the industry. A lot of papers came out of all this acquisition stuff. And then the result was basically an Accenture report, which is like the banking industry is about to collapse, traditional banking industry. So not collapse in the sense of uh, mm, what happened in 2008, the real no, estate market. Not in that way. In that Isn't it so it's it's going to collapse for the people who own the banks? Exactly. People are moving to digital banking, basically. How many times in the past couple of months you walked into the branch as opposed to checking your stuff on mobile? Probably yeah. one in hundred. So basically, banks will be sitting with branches with a lot of overhead, but no result. 
there's a huge huge move for the banks to figure out how they can creatively draw customers to the branch and is this where your company comes in uh yes that's that's one of the things we are doing like how we can provide an experience to the banking customers that will wow them which and so, that will draw them to the branch what's the name of your business do you have a card or anything yes yes i will give you my business card my the name of my business is thought box and the meaning of it is like thinking out of the box so we, we think box. out of the box provide solution that is basically really unique for windows android and ios yeah we are na lately focusing on these technologies like mobile technologies because that's the future for banks we work on total customer improvements for startups we probably do sometimes do pro product launch we do some branding stuff although we are slowly moving away from hardcore branding okay it's focusing on digital uh, pass it off to me yes absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so yeah. so you're the ceo yes oh look absolutely. at that you don't have a driver personal driver <laughs> <laughs> i do have oh you, of course you do one. <laughs> of course you have a personal driver let's go all the way back to the beginning when you're uh, a child if you don't mind sure. so when you're uh, five six years old what did you want to be when I was five, six years old, I wanted to do something different. Can we go to space? I yeah, could be something. I mean, I used to read those magazines. In fact, one of the one of my favorite magazines was Sputnik. Sputnik? Yes. That's Russian. Yeah, yeah, it's Russian. Well, I grew up in India, so we used to get a lot of Russian uh, science magazines. Oh, okay. So science used to attract me a lot. Technology and science was one of my things. So I I had a dream of doing something of my own, but I was not sure what was it. Because I grew up in a small town. Um, were your parents supportive? My parents were not a business-minded people. Uh, so when I had this idea, what, business, what did they do? If you don't mind me sharing. Um, my dad was a school principal. My oh, mother wow. was a school teacher. Oh my goodness! That is a bad combination for I an know, entrepreneur. I know. And <laughs> however, my grandfather had a tea orchard. Which a tea? Tea. Okay. Yeah, the region I come from, they grow really good tea. It's called Darjeeling tea. You guys should check it out. I'm planning to bring those tea in, in, in Canada because oh. you don't get this kind of teas here. All these. Is it really that good? Is really good. They call champagne of tea. There is a tea that I buy at. Um, tea one? I don't know. It's the only tea that I can get that I actually get sweet flavor out of. Yeah. Everything else that I've ever tried, there's no f sweetness to it. Yeah. Is this tea sweet or? No, it's not naturally sweet, but it's smooth. It's not bitter either. Because okay. the, what happens like in, a, in regular tea, like tea that you get usually in the market, right. these are actually uh, dried in oven, oven dried. So what happens is like leaf becomes almost charcoal. So it gives the kind of bitterness, right? But then the tea we sell is basically sun-dried, hand-picked and sun-dried. And it's a premium leaf, which is basically the top three leaves out of the entire plant. So you have this as a business back in India? Grandfather uh, bought this orchard because he bought it at a good price. How did he buy it? Um, was he an entrepreneur too? No, or? he wasn't. He was a, he was a bank manager. Uh, however, when um, India was getting independence, British was leaving all this stuff behind, all the lands and stuff, which they used to cultivate and take to England. Right. All this tea used to be part of the British high tea culture, was sold at a very, very low price, which my grandfather uh, partnered with another guy. Uh, they wanted to do something, but then my grandfather was employed in a bank, so his partner was running it. And then when my grandfather passed away, my parents um, divided the land and gave his partner the fair share and acquired the land on, my, on our own and then leased the land to a third party. So they were cultivating and then, then my parents were just sipping the profit. They were not doing anything. They were so still cultivating the tea? Yeah. But then the guys who leased it, they were doing it. They were like a property company. Oh, I see. Huh. So, uh, so basically there was nothing businessy going on. Well, they that is businessy. Yeah, well, sense. not in a strict sense. Yeah. They had a land and they leased it. Right. They didn't want to do anything. They didn't want to build a brand or, a, or anything out of it, mm -hmm. which could be done. Which I want to do. That's seems why like, like it. Yeah. Like it seems like you have all the yeah. the puzzles uh, yeah, exactly. in place. So because this same tea, you go to a big London supermarket, high scale markets, uh, supermarkets or like Harrods and stuff. They have any onion? Like, uh, not with me right now. <laughs> I but yes, say. I actually got some samples and gave it to some people, and they loved it. Oh, okay. Yeah. In fact, I spoke to many tea party organizers. 
high tea party organizers, they really would love it. They want to huh. keep it. And some people who love, really love tea, they, oh. they, they want to order What is the name of this brand? I'm still developing it. I'm thinking of uh, organic name because it's an organic tea naturally. So I'm thinking called Moksha. Moksha means like, you know, the fruit of good deed. Okay. Uh, yeah, Moksha. so Moksha is a catchy name, small, yeah. short, catchy name. I registered the domain. So it's good. You know yeah. what you're doing. Looks like okay. So again, uh, we're, I'm just trying to paint a whole picture because uh, the viewers they would like to know how a person got to where they're, they're right, at. Exactly. When I talked about business to my parents, they totally said no. Totally said no. But then uh, I was always passionate about doing something. Did you go to school like, for business? No, I I was sent to a regular school. I did my MBA. Uh, however, I had passion towards art. Follow artists. Check myself into an art school and I completed five years of painting degree. So when I finished my MBA, I also had a painting degree, which was contradictory to each other. So all I wanted to do next is break away from the small town culture. So I wanted to come to a big city. I tried to find a job in a nearby big city, which I did. However, my bigger goal was to come to New York because that was the happening place. Right. I'm talking about 1998. Okay. So right before the uh, domain names. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Big uh, meltdown happened at that time. Uh, a lot of American companies are hiring a lot of tech guys. So I thought, let me see if I can get a programming degree. But serious? You yeah. just decided to get just get a program? Yeah. Like one thing about me is like I'm very dedicated. If I have a goal, if I yeah. decide to do something, I'll do it. I, I have a software company that I'm a partner of. It's called The Logic Box. Okay. I project manage project with software development teams. Right. But I tried learning it. Like really, really, I enrolled in a course. Yeah. Tried learning it from scratch. And it's just, I just, my mind was just not wrapping around it. And right. I was just like, I just don't want to. I know. But you decided to. Yes, sometimes you have to make a choice. You don't you may not want to, but yeah. you know, strategically it makes sense. Yes. And hard work always pays off. That's one thing about uh, Walt Disney, this is one of his famous quote. There is no substitute for hard work, no yeah. matter how talented you are. After six months I had a certification and I got a job. Then okay. um, You had a certification, so what did you learn? I learned programming, Java programming. That's it? Yeah, that's it. And I, but I had an MBA degree too, so people right. thought, okay, you know, this guy has an MBA degree, so he's not stupid. Yes. <laughs> and I had a unique combination, I had an art degree as well. The so, creative flair, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so I got a job, I was able to land a job. My next target was to move to US, to New York, not anywhere else, just to New York. So this previous job was in India still? That was in India, yes. Okay. Yeah, like when I was doing job, a friend of mine, he owned a movie theater in India. Okay. So he wanted to create an online ticket booking system for his theater. Uh -huh. And he was looking for someone to build it. And then I said, you know what, I just learned programming and I'm doing a job. Can I help you? And he said, no, you don't have any knowledge or experience. Yeah, right, right. How do I trust you? You don't have to pay me anything. Oh. All you lose is a month of time. Yeah. Which, and then if you don't like it, just don't pay me anything. What is on some sort of a contingency that if it works that he would pay you or no? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So basically it was like, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't have to take it. He can go to somewhere else. So he took the, took, the, took, my, took the challenge and I took the challenge too. After a month, I had one of the best movie booking system in, in, in India. Did you do it yourself? Did you program yes, it yourself? Yes, by myself. Wow. Design and programming because I had design background. Of course. And programming background. After a month, I had a fantastic website. People loved it. It was featured in newspaper, in a magazine. Is it TV. because of the, the movie theater yeah, itself? Yeah, movie theater, but then how easy and fantastic the website was. Anyway, so, and new thing came up. People are asking for more. Like, I got money plus I got a lot of projects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have to go to Can I ask around. how much? It was for that um, movie afterwards. How much he actually yes. paid? Was it? Uh, did you do a, uh, a monthly license deal? Yes. Because now you had a white label software, exactly. right? Exactly. So what happened was like you know he paid a lump sum money and then there was a maintenance fee coming every month. The money he paid may not sound a lot here, but in Indian currency it was a lot. It was around fifty thousand Indian rupees and for a month of work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it was a very good money, yeah. and that actually got me started my first business, which was uh, like um, a software company, I guess. Yes. The name of my company was different. It's called Infonet Technologies. Okay. It doesn't exist anymore because I shut it down. Started How old are you at this point? That time, I don't know, maybe 20, 21. 21. Damn. Yeah. You're like a yeah. prodigy. Are yeah, you a prodigy? I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so I had fame, I had my money, I yeah. had my business, everything came uh, just 21. Strong, came pouring in, you yes. know. So fantastic. I had a Did you get married office. throughout this time? <laughs> no, that came after a uh, couple of years. Okay. Yeah. I got totally drawn into business. I quit my job. After a year of doing this business, I started beginning to pinch. I have to move to New York. And it's not happening. I have a bigger goal. So I gave my business to my friend and I told him, you know what, let me move to New York. Once I move there, I'll be able to send some projects because outsource model works. Of course. So I moved to New York. I found a job in Merrill Lynch in New York for the financial center. My dream city and uh, that time I thought, okay, you know what, I'm here, I made it, I have to restart. So I changed the name of my company. It's called Indusnet. It still exists. However, I sold it to my friend. When we had about 200 men count, I realized like, no, this is not what I wanted to build. So I wanted to downsize. So I told my friend that, you know, this is what I want to do. And he wasn't ready to take it to that level I wanted to or take it to that direction. So we parted away. Then 9-11 happened. So the whole thing got messed up. I was out of job because I was working right in World Financial Center. Oh. Yeah. Kind of. You were working in the buildings? Not on World Trade Center. Yeah. I was working in the World Financial Center, which okay. is the next building. Wow. The building was basically the whole entire ground zero was closed, right? Where were you at when this happened? I was about to get to the work. Wow. Yeah. So anyways, what happened is like, um, I came to India for about six months to rethink what to do. Then I found another job. I needed a sponsor to go back to US. And my sponsor was PNG. So in PNG, good thing was that, you know, I was in an agency kind of setting, which I really wanted to do. So I got an exposure of how to run an agency. After two years, I quit PNG and started sponsoring myself. You started sponsoring yourself. Myself, so you created a corporation. Able, yes, because I was able to create a corporation on my own. And that corporation. What does that entail in Canada? You have to have a certain amount of money in the bank. Yes. Right? And then yeah, you and sponsor yourself. Yes. Uh, so in the US, it was about, um, about $100,000. Okay. And then you have to file tax for a year and then employ two US citizens. Okay. That will probably have changed now. Yeah, it's 250 now, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. that so, and then I, yeah, I had uh, my office in Uptown Manhattan, a small office, and I was to get started. And then I started Thoughtbox. So that Thoughtbox was born, and then it started growing. We did a lot of projects on real estate, very high-end luxury real estate. After a couple of years, it was 2009, Thoughtbox was growing. We were about 22 people. I opened an office in India. We had office in London, a small office in Singapore. I was that time in India, I was traveling. And, and then I got sick, severely sick. My appendix was ruptured. I was totally unconscious. Um, I was there without treatment for about six hours, which is enough for people to get treatments dying. And then when I was in the hospital bed, I realized like, you know, I could be dead. And then because doctors had to do operations without knowing anything about me. Maybe a lot of people go through this. What if we could have a platform, medical platform, which will allow people to carry all their medical history within them. Mm -hmm. um, so I started working on some algorithm and uh, to see if we could create a health score. Now, when you say we... So idea is me, mine, but then I needed a team to work with it. Right. So we came up with an algorithm which will basically analyze your health situation. But I would have to input, download the app and input um, things, right? There are many ways to get the data. So one is, yes, you can input. Other is like you can have your wearables tracking that with all the data. Oh. Plus all your health history that your doctors can actually upload. So you're clearly an entrepreneur. I mean, your story is just yeah. like something out of a Zuckerberg yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. When's the movie coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Once I launch this app, a right. medical platform. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, it's a, like fantastic. a... It's It's a really big, big idea. Oh, it's a billion yeah. dollar idea? You think? I could say potentially, yes. Wow. Potentially, Get a billion in the car now. Uh, well, everyone is a billionaire, you know. It's true. It's, there is a potentially a billionaire. Yeah, exactly. But what would you say are the three things that make up an entrepreneur? I think the ability to take risk, ability to think and act on the thoughts. Take action? Yeah, take action on the thoughts and ability to lead. 
What do you say to all those people who have an idea and they're afraid to share it because they're afraid someone will either steal it or they'll put them down and then they'll lose traction or momentum? To be honest, uh, people who steal uh, will always be thieves. They'll never be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are never thieves. People can steal their ideas, but nobody can steal the passion that comes behind the idea. Exactly. You know, so get the idea that comes out of your passion and that's the belief you carry. Yeah. And that cannot be stolen. Yeah, nobody can replace how passionate yes. you are about something. Exactly. What would you say was your biggest obstacle in growing any of your businesses? My biggest obstacle was basically um, myself, my mentality. Like, but it seems your mentality is a go-getter, take action, learn, do it. Yes, when uh, you start as an entrepreneur, you become sometimes your biggest enemy. Entrepreneur's mind is always moving from one to another. It's very difficult to stay focused. And yes. many times in my life, I lost focus. So I became my biggest enemy. So all the failures in, in my life, which is good that you, failure makes you perfect. Failure makes you what's going Successful. wrong. Successful, yeah. Exactly, Every, everyone failed in, your, in, in their life, and Steve Jobs failed. So every day we are coming up with new ideas and thinking like this is a game-changing idea, let's <laughs> do it and then it's gonna change the world. Yeah. So our mind shifts from one to another. It's very important to stay focused. How do you know what idea you should go and invest your time and resources in? First of all, you have to believe in your ideas. That's very, very important. If you don't believe in your ideas, nothing will work. Once you have a belief, then you go out and see if this idea can solve a problem. Every idea that can solve a problem can be a potentially big business. For example, like, you know, Uber. So our problem Uber solves is basically that people don't want to pay overpriced a taxi or they're not happy with the taxi cab. They don't they carry don't, cash. Yeah, they don't carry cash and then they don't know where to find cabs, you know. So that was the problem, right? So Uber solved it. So see if your ideas can potentially solve a big problem. It may not be a very big problem, it could be a medium problem, but if this problem is a worldwide problem, then collective market could be potentially big. So when you just launched your software companies, would you say that was an idea or was that just like a business? Well, Was it solving a problem? Software, the, when, I, when, I, when I started the software company, it was basically not an idea, it was my passion. Because mm. I didn't start with an idea. The medical platform that I'm planning to launch is an idea. Right. But then the software company is basically a service. It's an idea of a service, but it's not a rocket science. It was done before. Do you think that this medical app, do you think this is like your best idea? This is the best idea that I'm going to execute. Ever? Uh, ever, think? yes. Um, I had some other ideas which I actually didn't act on. Uh, which I'm not regretting because situation didn't allow me. What do you say to people who are struggling and raising funds for their business? All I will say is that don't go for funding as long as you can. Struggle and get traction as much as you can. If you go for early stage funding, unless you are a great negotiator, you most likely lose a lot of stake. And probably a lot of people who are not really as passionate about your business as you are, probably you'll take a seat, a driving seat. That happens to a lot of people. Get associated to other entrepreneurs, see what they're doing, learn from them, and see how we can improve your business and get traction, and then go for funding. What about you know, young people out there? who just want to get a taste of entrepreneurship. So nobody wants to work these days. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a very odd society we're living in now, right? YouTube, you can make money online, affiliate marketing, this and that. What do you tell those young people? Be different. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. I mean, my idea of living is like, when I leave this world for good, I will have something behind. Like a legacy. Legacy, yeah. That's my objective. And the way I see is maybe I'll leave an idea behind, or a big organization behind, or maybe a charitable company behind. Some people could say, you know what, I wanna have my musical legacy behind. So some people say, I'm gonna leave my paintings behind. All I can say is find where your passion lies and go for it. It doesn't have to be business. Just something that you believe and that's something that you think that can improve a lot of people's life. Or you can make people laugh. Yeah, exactly. Right, maybe that's what a lot of people don't understand. People yeah. think that business is business to the core. But you don't need to be in the mentality of I'm gonna make a 
hundred thousand or two hundred. If you're in university right now, let's just say, you're just about to leave all these mentors and all these people who are holding your hand. The government's been paying your way probably because you got uh, assistance for school. So now you're thrown into the world and now you're gonna be like, oh, I deserve $100,000. No, you don't deserve anything. Absolutely. You need to go and find your thing, but on the same note, you shouldn't be greedy. That's the thing I've heard a lot. I want my dream job and I'll make a lot of money. You almost can't have two. You have to go through trials and tribulations like you did. Be in the business of your passion. Do not be in the business of making money. That's what I believe. If you have the passion, if you have the right passion, you go after your passion. That's why you'll see that everything gets fulfilled. People will be happy, you'll be happy, and you'll also make money. What do you think of the Uber experiment? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Uh, yeah. I mean, so far it's been great. Great discussion, yeah. great conversation. Well, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um, if you allow me to put this on the internet for everybody, and TV for everybody Absolutely. to see, that would be great. Probably we have to. Of course, I have stuff for you to sign. We do this legitimately. Well, and advice then to anybody uh, out there. Because if you're leaving a legacy, you just got your interview. Never give up. Just never give up. Never give up. Yeah. By the way, the name of the app will be Medific, M-E-D-I-F-I-C. Does that have anything to do with like Magnifique as well? Like it's magnificent? Yes, it's a magnificent, it's magnificent. It's a magnificent medical, medical app. Yes. If you want to plug anything, uh, website, Facebook's for your companies, feel free. Yes. Thoughtbox.com, that T-H-E, Thoughtbox, T-H-O-T-B-O-X. Yeah. And then Medific.com, M-E-D-I-F-I-C.com. Well, thanks again, guys, for tuning in to another episode of the Uber Experiment. I hope that you've learned something, you've been inspired and motivated by this gentleman right here, uh, Arun. I'm sure you don't need luck, but good luck. Uh, whatever it is that you're probably dropping off some billion dollar meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Anything could be billion dollar. Yes, well, that's true, right? So Life we'll, is a billion dollar gift. That's true. So don't waste it. Yeah. Best ideas are always found in the graveyard, right? Yes. Uh, Arun here, Bill Gates, uh, Donald Trump, even Paris Hilton. All these people have the same thing in common. They all had 24 hours in a day and they became what they became. So I guess you can too. Absolutely. Thanks, Marcin. Hey, pleasure. Great, great pleasure, yes, absolutely. So I'll just drop you off here. The most important people that will say yes to you, they'll say yes to you when they're in front of you. It's easy to talk about things that are happening when you're there, but it's the struggles and the perseverance that most people don't understand. It's unique to be able to get people thinking the way you do. There's a considerable number of people that do want to genuinely help you. It's up to you to seek those people out. You guys gotta see this. Wow. You also can learn from people who have entirely and utterly failed. Potentially careers. somebody who contacts your magazine could end up being inside your magazine. They can write for us, yes. Money! money. Me and my money. money. Are you married? I was. Oh, I was. That's the problem with billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you will be yeah. again.